Hello, everybody. We are again at our talk, and today we have the opportunity to to learn something about uh, the legal protection of intangible cultural heritage in Spain with uh, Carmen Cabrera. She is the head of the UNESCO Office of the Minister of Culture in Spain. So we are very, very happy to have this opportunity uh, to learn about the protection of intangible cultural heritage in Spain by the most important uh, uh, officials that in Spain is in charge on the implementation of the UNESCO Convention. So thank you very much, Carmen, for being here involved in this talk, and I give you the floor. Thank you, Carmen. Okay, well, it's a pleasure for me as the Spanish focal point for the ICH 2003 Convention to give this lesson and to share this time with you. And I hope that what I am going to tell and explain will be of interest to you and help you to understand a little bit about the management of ICH in Spain. The lesson will focus on the legal measures and instruments for the protection of ICH in Spain. To this end, I have structured the content in four sections, beginning with an introduction that serves to give a general idea of what this kind of intangible heritage means in the Spanish culture and of its relevance and extent, also with reference to its presence on the lists of the 2003 Convention. Next, before entering a specific ICH legislative matters, it seems to me necessary a second section concerning the political and administrative background on which the specific regulatory framework of ICH in Spain is based. This, the third section will provide a brief overview on the national and regional laws of, of ICH. And finally, the fourth section will look at the specific protection measures and instruments such as the legal categories of protection the inventories and the national ICH safeguarding plan. Well, in Spain, we are faced with a great diversity of territories and communities that have developed over time an extensive and varied intangible heritage. Spanish culture has its roots in the influences left by the different peoples who have passed through the peninsula over the centuries. History, geography, orography, have shaped greatly today's culture. Although there is a cultural heritage common to all Spaniards, the special singularity of its regions has given rise to various cultural manifestations throughout its geography. We find these manifestations in all fields, arts, traditions, literature, languages and dialects, music, dances, crafts, gastronomy, etc. We thus have a huge and complicated heritage to manage, although fortunately, in most of the cases, it is self-managed by the bureau communities themselves that dynamize and pass it on in a natural way. It means that we start from a base in which these manifestations continue to be part of the annual and vital cycles of its actors. Spain currently has 17 elements inscribed on the representative list of the Intangible Cultural Heritage of Humanity and three on the Register of Good Practices of the 2003 Convention. These manifestations cover the four domains defined by the 2003 Convention in its Article 2. Oral traditions and expressions, including language as a vehicle of the Intangible Cultural Heritage, performing arts. Social practices, rituals, and festive events, knowledge and practices concerning nature and the universe, traditional craftsmanship. These elements already inscribed are just a small sample of the great intangible patrimonial wealth that is kept alive in our country. To be able to go into the regulatory framework and protection measure for this ICH in our country, it is necessary to make a brief introduction starting from our fundamental law, the Constitution of 1978, both in relation to the concept of culture and to the model of territorial decentralization that shapes the state of the autonomies. Both are key questions to understand the de legal development of the protection and enhancement of ICH. The Spanish Constitution of 1978 has often been referred to as the cultural constitution because already from its preamble highlights the value it places on culture and its protection, invoking the will of the Spanish nation to protect, 
all Spaniards and peoples of Spain in the exercise of human rights, the cultures and traditions, languages and institutions, and promote the progress of culture and economy to ensure a dignified quality of life for all. This desire regarding intangible heritage is realized through various precepts that are expressive of the value given to the ICH as an essential part of our culture. However, it is Article 46, the one that most clearly refers to cultural heritage and that allows us to understand more fully the change of outlook featured in the Spanish constitution, according to which the public authorities will guarantee the conservation and promote the enrichment of the historical, cultural and artistic heritage of the peoples of Spain and the assets that make it up, whatever its legal regime and ownerships. On the other hand, it is in this constitution that the state of autonomy is built as a model of territorial decentralization that grants 17 regions called autonomous communities and two autonomous cities, political, legislative, institutional, financial and government autonomy. The arrangement of this territorial system at the legislative level involves a, a rather complex distribution of powers between the state and the autonomous communities that far exceeds the, the, the subject of this lesson. But it is enough to bear in mind that culture is a shared power between the state and the autonomous communities. So we will find laws and protection measures both at the state and regional levels, being the autonomous communities the main managers of cultural heritage. Before entering the regulation of the ICH from the power of culture, it is important to point out that there are other areas with competences in the intangible heritage that show the living meaning and the social use of our manifestations. For example, we, can, we could name transhumans or esparto ras culture protected both from the field of culture and heritage, but also managed from fields such as agriculture, industry, environment and sustainability. In this sense, it can be acknowledged that the protection and recognition of these manifestations as ICH has enhanced their consideration beyond the, their cultural value, recognizing and protecting their functional and important dimension for today's society. We will briefly address the legislative journey starting from the Constitution of 1978 and the democratization of culture to this day and considering Spain's ratification of the 2003 Convention in 2006, a milestone in the following regulation and in the entity that is granted to the protection of ICH in Spain. The law of the Spanish historical heritage from 1985 and still in force is the first law that integrates the concept of ICH by, by including within the very concept of Spanish historical heritage, knowledge and activities that are or have been a relevant expression of the traditional culture of the Spanish people in its material, social or spiritual aspects. This law went before UNESCO began the process of theoretical reflection and legal administrative experimentation that led to the consolidation at the turn of the century of the notion of IC8, but it still was able to partially advance this notion by recognizing as a set of the historical heritage, living heritage elements belonging to the present time. In this law, the regulation of this kind of assets is part of the special framework established for the ethnographic heritage, offering nevertheless a brief and clearly insufficient treatment. At the beginning of the 90s, autonomous communities faced the task of deepening the protection of ICH in the context of the de development of the different autonomous laws of historical or cultural heritage. Between the 19th and the present date, the 17 autonomous communities have legislated on their historical or cultural heritage. We have witnessed four generations of regional laws, including reforms of the first ones that have regulated this heritage with greater or lesser success, in many cases following the state model of the historical heritage law or regulating it within the specific framework of ethnographic heritage, and in other cases adding concepts, instruments of protection and definitions more in line with its intangible nature and the conceptual basis of the 2003 Convention. The truth is that 
ICH presented a series of features that made it unique with, this, with respect to the rest of the assets protected by cultural heritage regulations and that shaped the need to regulate it in a specific way. Among these features, we can refer the difficulty of its protection resulting from its light living nature and its constant evolution and the essential involvement of society in its safeguarding. In this sense, since the beginning of the 21st century, ICH was experiencing a remarkable conceptual blossoming, also in the social awareness and above all, in the international legal order, whose greatest milestone is, as said, the adoption of the UNESCO Convention in 2003. For all these reasons, a specific law was necessary to offer a comprehensive framework for this heritage, and this initiative was taken by the state with the law of 2015 on the safeguarding of the intangible cultural heritage. This is the first law that broadly regulates ICH, offering a complete and coherent legal framework for this kind of heritage. This law outlines a set of guidelines that do not prevent the autonomous communities from also being able to develop their specific regulation on the same matter. General lines are in fact establishing a basic and general concept of ICH inspired by Article 2 of the 2003 Convention, which details and expands. Regulating the fundamental principles and rights involved in this heritage establishing the general administrative and organic mechanisms for the insertion of all Spanish ICH through the general inventory of intangible cultural heritage. It establishes as well a new category of protection at the maximum protection level and with a national scope, the representative manifestations of the ICH, of which we will talk later. Regulating the operational instruments of action, the National Plan for the Safeguarding of, I, of ICH that by that time was already in force and of which we will talk later as well. Establishing the general purposes of the different areas and sectors like education or social media that according to the UNESCO Convention can be of great help for a better safeguarding and knowledge of the intangible heritage. This law also attributes to the state the elevation to UNESCO of the proposals to include these goods in the representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity and in the list of goods that require urgent safeguarding measures. To start with the section of a specific instruments of protection, it is important to highlight first the fundamental role of rural communities in the self-management of ICH. In this sense, we must point out the presence of laws and measures that favor associations in Spain by recognizing them and enabling them uh, for the promotion of their activities. Social responsibility of the community is crucial as, as it is the only way to help the survival and true transmission of cultural manifestations. Thus, the involvement of, ag of agents outside the community, including public administrations, must be taken with extreme caution. Legal categories of protection for intangible heritage. When the law of historical heritage of 1985 was published, the old denominations of monument or historical site gave, gave, gave way to a new terminology that unified under the name of a set of cultural interest, the figure of maximum protection. The laws of historical or cultural heritage of the autonomous communities mostly respect the model of protection established by this first state law, organized in three levels of protection, unregistered goods, medium-grade goods, and the most relevant, the, the assets of cultural interest. The declaration of these assets is the responsibility of the autonomous communities. Thus, in all the autonomous regulations, we find the attribution of powers on the registers of these assets to the general directorates of historical or cultural heritage. There are currently approximately 194 intangible assets of cultural interest declared by the autonomous communities, except for Catalonia and Basque Country, which are distributed as presented in the table, with the autonomous community of Valencia being the one that to date has a greater number of declarations, 40 and followed in number by Castilla-La Mancha, Canary Island, and Andalusia. The analysis of these regional declarations 
shows in general a prevalence of declared elements in the areas relating to beliefs, festival rituals and other ceremonial practices, as well as performances and traditional games and sports. The survival of manifestations with a festive character is because they develop outside the productive activities and the current ways of life. This fact also favors that they are immaterial cultural manifestations in lower risk of disappearance, but in greater danger of distortion. On the contrary, those other manifestations linked more closely to traditional life systems, such as forms of, of collective sociability or artisanal knowledge and techniques, are already outside the current daily life, that they have been lost in many cases due to the passage of time and the lack of generation, re generational replacement. In addition to these regional declarations, there are also the national level representative manifestations of the ICH, declared under the aforementioned law of 2015, which, as we have already mentioned, are suitable with autonomous communities' own declarations of these elements. For example, transhumans is declared as a representative manifestation of ICH, but also declared as a set of cultural interest by Aragon or Navarra. For the state to proceed with these national declarations, some of the following conditions must be met. One, the, mani the manifestation extends to the territory of more than one autonomous community and there is no legal instrument of cooperation between them for an integral protection. Two, when the declaration is requested by the autonomous communities where the manifestation takes place upon request of its viewers. Three, when the manifestation requires for its specific understanding a unitary consideration of that shared tradition beyond the one that can receive in one or more autonomous community. Four, when it has as its object those intangible cultural manifestations that, that were appropriate may appear associated or linked to public services owned by the state. And five, when the manifestation has a special relevance and international scope for cultural communication, being an expression of the history shared with other countries. There are currently nine representative manifestations of ICH declared. Carnival, Holy Week, Transhumans, Sexeni, Spartogras, Bell Ringing, Musical Societies of Valencia, Glass Blowing Techniques and Nativity Scenery. In general, the administrative procedure for these declarations, both the regional and the national, is usually based on a prior report made by anthropologists and experts that necessarily includes a field work in which the viewers are involved as informers. Likewise, the procedure provides for a public audience that allows the viewers and other institutions to review the file. These declarations must comprise minimal requirements such as reference to the space-time background where the intangible manifestation takes place and the material goods associated are developed. The identification of the risks, risks that threaten the existence of the manifestation, including the virtualization, the influence of external agents, touristizations or other legislations. The enumeration of a series of specific safeguarding measures mainly focus on transmission. The consequences of these declarations are recognition, visibility, awareness and protection through access to grants and financing for special safeguarding plans. Inventories. You cannot protect what is not known and knowledge is therefore the beginning of any ICH management activity, since it will allow the, uh, to order the elements according to their importance or relevance. In general, we can set two types of knowledge activities, pre-inventories or knowledge inventories, and inventories and catalogues intended to manage ICH, which register the ICH declarations that we have already mentioned as a result of an administrative procedure. In Spain, we can find many experiences of inventories, knowledge and management, and within those of knowledge total or partial of public and private ownership, etc. In the periodic reports present, presented by Spain recently, it was reported on 27 inventories of ICH present in our country, 
showing all this typological parity. Among all the inventories presented in the Spanish ter territory, we will highlight the Atlas of Andalusia, as it is the best considered and most advanced of all the initiatives being carried out in Spain. Other autonomous communities are taking it as an example when designing their own ICH protection strategies. Developed by the Andalusian Institute Institute of Historical Heritage, it began in 2009 with, anthropolo with an anthropological research in more than 400 municipalities distributed in 62 areas and analyzes the territorial distribution of the most significant features of the Andalusian intangible culture today in order to improve management, dissemination, enhancement and protection measures. A territorial, extensive and open recording criterion applies based on the knowledge of the population in situ and collecting the main types of elements and the most significant expressions, taking into account their identity value and the value given to them by the population. The territorial, economic, symbolic and political backgrounds where these practices are performed on a daily or cycle basis are also analysed. The project covers 62 territorial areas that group together the whole territory of Andalusia. The division into these 62 areas has been carried out taking into account both geographical and historical cultural factors as well as functional and recent territorial planning. It currently has 1,753 registered assets in four areas, festive rituals, traits and knowledge, ways of expression and gastronomy. The Andalusian Institute of Historic Heritage has created as well the network of reporting agents to collaborate, improve and give continuity to the Atlas of the ICH of Andalusia. In this line, associations and rural development, development groups partici participate in these activities and in the updating of the information system, as well as the safeguarding measures that can be applied to particularly treated expressions. The National Plan for the Safeguarding of ICH. The National Plan was presented by the Ministry of Culture in 2011 and accepted by all the autonomous communities. Its main objective is the establishment of concepts, methodology and criteria that allow for the adequate safeguarding of Spain's ICH. It also has a budget allocated to develop projects related to identification, documentation, dissemination and promotion of this heritage, both through inventories and awareness raising campaigns and institutional recognition. But even beyond these aims, the main purpose of this plan is to favour coordination between the competent administrations and with local authorities. Although it is not a legislative tool, it has had an important impact on the conceptualization of the ICH in Spain. Its, its character as a consultation tool offers many possibilities to students, experts and professionals alike, and its list of features can solve many doubts when it comes to decide whether or not an intangible cultural manifestation may or may not become ICH one day. The National Plan has been very successful in terms of its acceptance by the autonomous communities. From its drafting phase to its follow-up, the involvement of representatives of both the autonomous communities and universities, institutes and the Ministry of Culture itself has been standing. The National Plan Monitoring Committee meets twice a year. In these periodic meetings, the Monitoring Committee administers the budget of the plan for the corresponding year in projects proposed by the autonomous communities with the commitment to participate in its financing. Among the priorities for the allocation of these projects are both the first phases of inventory in places that do not have them, as well as the initiatives that are considered useful for the whole state, such as the specific safeguarding plans for representative manifestations of ICH. Some outstanding actions of the national plan so far uh, we have the AIDS for Intangible Cultural Heritage framed within a uh, law of 2015 for the safeguarding of the ICH and aimed at non-profit entities ranging from autonomous communities to cultural associations. 
they have provided an economic boost for very diverse action, management, dissemination, studies, etc. We have the didactic unit to introduce in the formative dynamics of regulated education content aimed at the students of the values of the ICH. We have special plans for the safeguarding of ICH, like the one of the culture of Spartograss, involving dissemination and supporting the artisan and manufacturing field, etc., of this representative manifestation of ICH, also coordinating institutional recognition actions. We have atlas and inventory pro projects, like the atlas of traditional vineyard cultivation and its unique landscapes a complete action of documentation inventorying in this field. And we have exhibitions and training activities. Finally, we should mention that the plan currently integrates and works crosswise in three wide ranging national strategies. First, the national strategy for the demographic talent, paying special attention to those cultural assets located in areas affected by the demographic by demographic problems, specifically the population, and highlighting initiatives aimed to facilitate the development of new economic activities in the affected areas to support socioeconomic development projects for young people that ensure intergenerational changeover, and to facilitate the development of projects that ensure women's freedom of residence in the territory. To national strategy for adaptation to climate change. The intention to integrate issues related to climate change mitigation is made explicit by identifying elements of Spanish cultural heritage that are most vulnerable and define possible adaptation strategies, including the conclusions and results of climate change in the national plans for the conservation of cultural heritage, collecting and transferring vernacular knowledge useful for adaptation to climate change, promoting low carbon cultural tourism and promoting international cooperation in the transfer of knowledge to protect cultural heritage. Finally, the third strategy is the Spanish Sustainable Development Strategy focus that focuses on the challenge of environmental and social sustainability in cultural heritage and its direct impact on intangible cultural heritage, especially reassessing the tourism system and creating new value-added tourism products. Well, and here ends this presentation that I hope has served to offer a general vision of the work that is carried out in Spain for the protection of ICH. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Carmen. You said a lot of very useful and interesting things, but I want to stress one point when you say it's impossible to protect uh, if you don't know uh, which is intangible cultural heritage. And this is the role of inventory. And uh, as you noted in your country, there are a lot of several inventory. And I think that uh, this is the one of the best instruments uh, to protect our intangible cultural heritage. So thank you very much for being part of this talk. And we will see you on the next talk.